Hello and welcome to our second run of Fire Emblem. In the first run, we played as the Golden Deer. We played with the house leader Claude, who had a goal of uniting all of Fodlin and opening the borders to the rest of the world. And we completed that. We finished his goals, we finished his dreams, and now we have rewound time back to before all of that. We're back to the beginning, we're back to the three house leaders, and we're going to join the Black Eagles. We're going to find out what happened on the other side of the fence. And there's some other different, there's some other differences here. We're also playing with all the DLC released up until this point. So there's new quests, there's new music, there's new outfits, there's new activities, there's even new characters to recruit. And that all sounds incredibly exciting. Do you know what else is new about this one? New Game Plus. You know what we're not going to be using? New Game Plus. Why are we not using New Game Plus? Well, essentially, it makes the game too easy. The devs themselves know it makes the game too easy because you get a reward for completing maddening difficulty, the higher difficulty level, which we're going to be playing on, if you don't do it in New Game Plus. So, no New Game Plus for us. We are playing maddening difficulty for those who crave challenge, and I do. The game had some challenging moments, but it I wasn't really challenging. I ended the final fight with many retries left over, and I feel like that's just not right. What does maddening difficulty do? Well, all the characters that you face have more abilities. There are more characters to face. There are also um, the characters will just move when they arrive in combat. They won't wait for you to do your actions. They will also, it, what it also does is gives them more health. It gives them a higher level. It gives them more stats. And it halves your XP gains. Which, you know, is made up for by you having more enemies, but not quite. So, we are going to jump in. Maddening difficulty. Uh, of course we're playing on classic. Fallen units are lost forever. Every decision counts. Connect to the network and play online? Of course. I love seeing what other people chose. It is fantastic. It, it's great to see what other people were doing in a week and go, well, I'm not going to do that. So yeah. Preparing to establish connection. Preparing to start the game. And in we go. Taltian Plains, Imperial Year 921. Oh, my God. 
Hey, nemesis, do you recall the Red Canyon? You'll die! Oh. Die! Die! You took everything that I loved! He's gone now, Mother. Wow, that cutscene has so much more in it after I've finished the game. It's still epic, though. brought you here <sighs> I wonder how you got in here it is most rude to interrupt a moment of repose <sighs> very rude indeed now come to me I wish to have a look at you oh there's one other difference this time as well. We're gonna see what happens if we do this. Hmm, I have not seen the likes of you before. Who are you? Uh, I am. You know what? What were you saying? Last time I played it very straight. I am a demon. Do not deceive. You would do well to keep your wit in line. I'm a ghost. Do not deceive. You would do well to keep your wit in line. Oh, they don't like this at all. She doesn't like this at all. Okay then. I'm a mortal. I see. Then you must have a name of sorts. Go on. Okay. Well, we're not going to be called Byla. Last time... Oh. No, Byleth isn't correct. You delete it all and it says, Are you Byleth? No. This time we are going to be called the very incredibly smart name of Lapsa. Which is, of course, just alpacs with the words mixed with letters changed around, in case you didn't get that. Sure. Huh. I shall not ever grow accustomed to the sound of human names. You must possess a day of birth as well. Beneath which moon and on what day were you born to this world? Well, last time I put in my actual birth date, let's just reverse it. So, eight, uh, so two and then eight. There we go. Yes, that's correct. Well, wonders never cease. It seems we share our day of birth. How strange. I know, it was the, it, same thing happened last time as well. Hmm, it all feels so familiar. I think it may be time for yet another nap. Oh, I know what you're, I know what you're saying. It is almost time to Hey, time to wake up. Were you having that dream again? Um... Let's not tell him this time. Last time I said I was dreaming about a young girl. This time, I was dreaming about a war. Massive armies clashing on a vast field, right? Oh, there hasn't been a battle like that in over three centuries. In any case, just put that out of your mind for now. The battlefield is no place for idle thoughts. Risking your life is part of the job for mercenaries like us. Letting your mind wander is a sure way to get yourself killed. Okay, time to get moving. Our next job is in the kingdom. I told you before, it's far from here, so we'll need to leave at dawn. Oh, right. Hmm? Oh, 
Good grief. Everyone is already waiting for us outside. Gerald, sir. Sorry to barge in, but your presence is needed. What's happened? Please forgive our intrusion. We wouldn't bother you with a situation not dire. What do a bunch of kids like you want at this hour? It is so weird seeing these three after seeing where they were at the end of the last game. It's just like... They're just... Yeah, I don't know. It's They got so fleshed out by the end of the last uh, playthrough. It's odd to see them just go back to these forms. Yeah, okay. We're being pursued by a group of bandits. I can only hope that you will be so kind as to lend your support. Bandits? Here? It's true. They attacked us while we were at rest in our camp. We've been separated from our companions and we're outnumbered. They're after our lives. Not to mention our gold. I'm impressed you're staying so calm considering the situation. I... Wait, that uniform. Bandit spotted just outside the village. Damn, there were a lot of them. I guess they followed you all the way here. We can't abandon this village now. Come on, let's move. Hope you're ready. A skirmish at dawn, prologue, an inevitable encounter. Let's take care of those thieves before they overrun the village. Take down the enemies in front first. That should take the wind out of their sails. I know how to do combat. You don't need to tell me. Right. So, um, let's see what we're going to go for here. Seems to be roughly the same number of enemies in the first fight. I don't imagine it would have changed the first fight too much. It's still a tutorial after prevail. all. Let's see, yeah, so if I head here, yeah, so I probably want to hit with Claude first. Yes, I know how to Ready use bows, willing. thank you. I'm going to head in here, little attack with the iron bow. Yeah, on you go. Oh. Well, we're off to a good start, aren't we? Our weapon durability went down. Dimitri, uh, can you go next? Hopefully you're slightly better. If I miss all three, that would not be good. You know what, Dimitri? Actually, can I do the same with Edelgard? Might be best to get the XP on her if possible. Uh, no, I cannot. All right, well, Dimitri. Oh, wait, we can do talk here? Oh. You have a strange aura about you. You say you're a mercenary. So show me what you can do. Nice. Wait, and then we just have to end our turn? Oh. Okay, well, that's a reason not necessarily to talk right away. Uh, Tempest Lance? Well. Over already. That went pretty well. Yes, we can have a look at the battle menu. That's okay. Um, well, I guess we could Stay talk focused. to Claude while we're here. It's because of you guys that I'm not dead right now. Thanks for that. I didn't expect to run into mercenaries like you in some remote village. The gods of fortune must be smiling on me. Cool. Enemy phase. Ally phase. Our phase. We'll advance while protecting ourselves from the enemy. Take up position inside the forest. Yes, use terrain to your advantage. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, ideally I want to talk to Dimitri, so I might do that first, actually. Thank you. We are in your debt. It wouldn't do for us to fall in a place like this. Please, lend us your strength. Let's work together to drive out these thieves. Nice. Um, send Claude over here. Let's have a look at the range. Okay. Do you want to run her up? Then probably run Dimitri up here and then just wait. Cool. So here, who has the most health? Edelgard has the most health by some margin. I'm gonna stick her in the forest. Yes, good. If we're in the forest, we can sustain their attacks without losing the advantage. 
Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, we can only head up that far. Okay. Oh, I don't want to do that. Probably want to head up there. Want Dimitri to head into that forest. That way only one person can attack Edelgard at a time. And then we'll move Claude in between the three of us. Good. The first one attacks Edelgard. Ooh. She gets attacked twice, which isn't too great. But now no one else can attack, so they have to head around that way. Alright, that was fine. And then the third one just kind of stands there like, you know, spare part. This is a fine opportunity. Use the combat arts I taught you. Yes, use combat arts is what it wants us to do here. Um, right. I think I'm going to shoot that one. That clears them out of the way. Golden deer for you. Maybe I could have done this in a different way. Yeah, if I head around there, they're going to be able to attack. That's not really something I want to encourage. Yeah. Okay. Um, who are you going to attack? You attack in there. Okay. Well, I think the best move might be to just... Although, how much can we damage can we do? We can do 17 damage with one of those. So we couldn't kill one of these people. We just want to do that. That's fine. Each battle, a chance to grow. Then, unfortunately, I think what we want to do is give Dimitri more... Ah, you see, if he goes in there, he gets attacked immediately by these two. I could stick him in the next bush along, though. But he's still going to be... I think I just want to end his turn here. Yeah. An Edelgard, do you have a health potion on you? You do. Okay. Uh, what's your range? I could move her out and try and get them to attack her after she heals. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah. That's fine. He comes round, attacks her once. She attacks him. It's all good. Nice. Attack when an ally is nearby, and the enemy will be intimidated, making them easier to hit. Okay, that's fine. Well, I think I'm going to give Edelgard this kill here, although I'm going to move her along a little bit, just so that we don't waste the movement. Good, she did actually get the kill. Now you know your limits. I like the way that she uh, swings the axe. It's very different from the way everyone else does it in the game, but, you know, that's kind of neat. I think... Can I think where I want to go here? If I move out, I get attacked. Okay. We can probably take a hit. Do they have the same range? What's his range? Comparative. I kind of want to see comparative range. Oh, I guess the better way to do that would be through this. See, I was wondering if there was a spot where I could stand where only one of them could hit me. I don't think there is. Okay. I think Dimitri should be fine. Hopefully. Uh, we'll just end the turn there. Okay. Nice miss. Okay. That's more like it. Again, fantastic miss. We can move Edelgard in here. Get her to just slice. This has a much higher hit rate. Use that. Nice. No obstacle will stand. Good that she got the XP. And we want to get the other XP. Nice. Kill. That is that. Yes, we can use items. Got it. And then we'll move Claude forward. And move Dimitri forward. Damn! Why are there mercenaries in the village? Guess we'll have to deal with them too.
Okay. So, sometimes they'll have item drops. What does he have this time? An iron axe. Okay. I just want to see what my combat art does. That would kill this guy, but only on a 64% chance. They're not going to attack Dimitri either way. Let's go in and do this. Nice. Who's next? I think what we need to do is we need to head in here and do a little heal. Nice. Given that Edelgard can't hit them, I think the best move for her is to move forward and to heal. And then we'll move Claude in here. And they're not going to attack him anyway. So that's fine. Hey! You with the blank stare! Out of my way! 13 damage, that's okay. We got a slice back. Everyone's still alive. Okay. Miss. We got a hit back. We're still alive. Good. No. Don't steal my kill. Aren't you Gerald the Bladebreaker? What's a renowned mercenary like you doing here? I'm the one who should be complaining. I'm caught up in the mess you started. I like this. I don't think we got this last time. So I think we'd kill them before uh, Gerald got involved. And Gerald has a debuff? Huh. Uh, Lord is strength and defense. Oh, nice. Well, I think we want to do this. That's fairly alright. Almost level 2. And then we want Edelgard to come in here with her axe and smash him to death. Yeah, I'm gonna kill you where you stand. I just noticed that her crest is the crest of Zeros. That's intriguing. See if the iron axe and What are you accomplishing with that little stunt? It's like you're trying to get me killed, you fool. <sighs> well, it's fine. After all, if you don't know the value of your own life, you're not going to protect it very well, are you? Of course not. <laughs> well then, I guess it's up to me to guide you from now on, right? You can call me Sothis. But I'm also known as The Beginning. Hmm. Sothis. Yes, that is it. My name is Sothis. And I am also called The Beginning. But who once called me that? Sothis? I was not able to recall my name until just now. And just like that, it came to me. How odd. That look upon your face. Did you think me a child? A mere child who forgot her own name? Phooey! That child just saved your life. And what does that make you? I'm less than a child? Correct. You understand. You threw yourself before an axe to save just one young girl. Yet all is well, as I have stalled the flow of time for now. You would have died had I not intervened. Okay, well, thank you. so much to ask. I did deem you worth saving after all. Though it is only momentary, time has stopped. However did I manage that? Okay, so what will happen when time resumes? 
When time begins again, the axe will tear into your flesh and you will surely meet your end. Okay, well, don't restart time then. <sighs> How rude of you to drag me into this. Now, what to do? Um, I'll just stay here and wait to die. As though I could stand idly by and watch that come to pass. Oh, but perhaps. Of course. I must turn back the hands of time. It's just that simple. Yes, I do believe it can be done. You really are quite troublesome. I cannot wind back time too far, but all is well. You are aware of what's to come, which means you can protect yourself this time. Now go. Yes. You who bears the flames within, drift through the flow of time to find the answers that you seek. Did you just... The Knights of Seros are here! We'll cut you down for terrorizing our students! Wait, wait, I just want to go back to what Gerald said. He just said, did you just... Does Gerald know that we just turn back time? Hmm... That, that opens so many more questions up, but I'll, I'll leave it for just now and maybe we'll get an answer later. Hey! The thieves are running away! Go after them! The students seem to be unharmed. And... who's this? Uh... why him? Stage complete! MVP was Edelgard. Nice! Also, just to mention, I believe that some of the, I believe that all of the sound options may have been reset, just from what I'm hearing. It might be something to do with the new save. I will reset them when we get a chance. My, thank Not you that it's so too bad. Much. Captain Gerald, it is you. Goodness, it's been ages. Don't you recognize me? It's Aloise, your old right-hand man. Well, that's how I always thought of myself anyway. Oh, it must have been 20 years ago that you went missing without a trace. I always knew you were still alive. You haven't changed a bit, Aloise, just as loud as ever. And drop that captain nonsense. I'm not your captain anymore. These days, I'm just a wandering mercenary, one who has work to do. Uh, goodbye, old friend. Right. Goodbye, Captain. Wait, that isn't how this ends. I insist that you return to the monastery with me. Garrig Mock Monastery. Uh, I suppose this was inevitable. And how about you, kid? Are you the captain's child? Um... I'm a bandit. <laughs> Great sense of humor, this one. Clearly cut from the same cloth as the captain. I'd love for you to see the monastery, too. You will join me, won't you? <sighs> What's troubling you, Captain? You aren't about to run off again, are you? Even I wouldn't dare run from the Knights of Saros. The Knights of Saros? They do seem rather skilled. Ah, it seems your presence is required. Get going. Okay, voice in my head. I appreciate your help back there. Your skill is beyond question. You're clearly an experienced mercenary. And your father, 
That would be Geralt, the Bladebreaker, former captain of the Knights of Saros, oft praised as the strongest knight to ever live. Have I missed anything? Um, I don't know he was a captain. How curious. I'd wager the explanation for that is fascinating indeed. Hey, you are coming with us to the monastery, right? Of course you are. I'd love to bend your ear as we travel. Oh, I should mention that the three of us are students of the Officers Academy at Garrig Mach Monastery. We were doing some training exercises when those bandits attacked. I definitely got the worst of it. That would be because you ran off. Too true. I was the first to make a strategic retreat. Everything would have worked out if these two hadn't followed me and ruined everything. Because of them, every single one of those bandits chased after us. Utterly ridiculous. Ah, so that's what you were thinking, Claude. And here I thought you were acting as a decoy for the sake of us all. His intentions were as clear as day. You will prove a lacking ruler if you cannot see the truth behind a person's words. <laughs> you will prove a lacking ruler yourself if you look for deceit behind every word and fail to trust those whom you rely on. Oh, joy. A royal debate between their highnesses. I wonder how being completely predictable affects one's ability to wield power. Personally, as the embodiment of distrust, I'd say your little exchange smacks of naivete. Me? Naive? Tell me, are you actually incapable of keeping quiet, or is your lack of self-awareness a condition of some sort? In any case, forgive our digression. I must speak with you if you can spare a moment. The way you held your ground against the bandit's leader was captivating. You never lost control of the situation. It showed me I still have much to learn. Your skill is precisely why I must ask you to consider lending your services to the Empire. I might as well tell you now, I am no mere student. I am also the Adrestian Empire's... Halt, Edelgard. Please allow me to finish my own proposition. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus is in dire need of exceptional individuals like yourself. Please, do consider returning to the Kingdom with me. Whoa there, you two sure are hasty. Trying to recruit someone you just met. <laughs> Tactless, really. I was personally planning to develop a deep and lasting friendship on our journey back to the monastery before begging for favors. But it seems there's no time for niceties in this world. So, capable stranger, let's get right to it. Where does your allegiance lie? Hmm. It seems one's place of birth is quite significant to them. Yet they are so impressed by you that you may take your pick. Well? Resist clicking Leicester Alliance. Resist it. All right, Adrestian Empire, land of ancient history. <laughs> A wise choice. Though the Empire has fallen from its former glory, the other regions are merely offshoots that pale in comparison. Sorry, Claude. All right, that's enough with the small talk. It's time to head back to the monastery. Looks like we'll have to pick this up another time. My, my, they are in such a hurry. You know, each of the three is most unique. Edelgard. She is a refined young woman. But I feel as though she is always evaluating me. Dimitri. He seems quite sincere. But I sense a darkness lurking beneath. Claude. His easy smile is striking, but that smile doesn't reach his eyes. Yes, I thought the same. Oh, I am so sleepy once again. Oh, I may be sleeping, but I... Oh god, she's got me yawning. Part 1. White Clouds Great Tree Moon. Three Houses. The icy winds of the Agma Mountains have begun to scatter, and the verdant fields once again spring to life across Fodland, heralding the start of a new year. As they celebrate the dawning year, the people pray that they may realize their full potential, just as a tiny sprout 
hopes to one day grow into a great tree. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000-year-old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the holy kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. To the east, a league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. Once consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, Fodlan and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. This will be your first time at the monastery. I'd be happy to show you around. It really is Fodlan in a nutshell. The good and the bad. Like it or not, we'll be there soon enough. There it is. Garrick Mock Monastery. The flow of time bring you here. It's been years since I've last set eyes on this place. To be forced to see her now, uh... You've been here before? I've never spoken of this to you before, but many years ago, I was a knight here. I reported to the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Lady Rhea? As you know, the majority of folks in Fodlan are devout followers of the teachings of Seros. The leader of that ridiculously large religious organization is the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Thank you for your patience, Gerald. My name is Setic. I am an advisor to the Archbishop. Right. Hello. It has been a long time, Gerald. I wonder... Was it the will of the Goddess that we have another chance meeting like this? Forgive my silence all these years. Much has happened since we last spoke. So I see. The miracle of fatherhood has blessed you. That is your child, is it not? Yes. Born many years after I left this place, I wish I could introduce you to the mother of my child, but I'm afraid we lost her to illness. I see. My condolences. As for you, I heard of your valiant efforts from Alois. What is your name? My name is... As... You know what? We're just gonna say nothing. Last last time I was very, you know, open with things. I was very... Uh, you know, I, I, I was quite happy to go along with what they want. I'm just gonna go, no. I'm not gonna tell you my name. You must at least show the basic courtesy of telling us your name. Do you not think you are being a bit rude to the Archbishop? Definitely, but that's why I'm doing it. It is all right, Sedith. My dear, I am called Rhea. I am the Archbishop of the Church of Seros. 
In truth, I was only being polite. I already know your name, and a fine name it is. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for saving those students of the Officer's Academy. Hmm. Gerald, you already know what it is I wish to say, do you not? You want me to rejoin the Knights of Seros, don't you? I won't say no, but... Your apprehension stings. I had expected that Alois would have already asked this of you. I must step away for now. But I expect they will desire a word with you soon. Please listen carefully to what they have to say. Until tomorrow, farewell. Ah, <sighs> I can't believe it. Force back into the Knights of Seros. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Looks like I'll be stuck here for a while. And I'm afraid your services are requested as well. I must work here? As a servant? Nothing like that. They want you to teach, by the sound of it. You heard those brats earlier talking about the Officer's Academy, right? Well, the Academy just happens to be short a professor. And apparently that damned Alois went and recommended you to Lady Rhea. So, you must be the new professor. My, how stern and handsome you are. Is he talking to Gerald? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not the one you're looking for. You can handle things from here. Good luck. And watch out for Lady Rhea. Will do. I don't know what she's thinking making you a professor like this. She may be up to something. Stay on your guard. Oh, it's you then? So young. Competence and age are not necessarily correlated, as you well know. Getting a little dig in there right away, Hanneman, right? I am Hanneman, a Crest Scholar and Professor at the Officer's Academy. I wonder if you bear a crest of your own. When next you have a moment to spare, I insist that you pay me a visit so we can delve into the subject further. I'm Manuela. I'm a professor, a physician, a songstress, and available. It's nice to meet you. You know, that line hit a lot better when we were a male character. But okay. Where, where's the you're available? That's what I want to see. You're a songstress? Before I came here, I belonged to a renowned opera company. Perhaps you've heard of me? The Middlefranc Opera Company is beautiful, peerless. Spare our colleague the needless chatter, Manuela. Now then, it seems you'll be taking charge of one of the Academy's three houses. I expect you haven't yet been briefed on the nature of each, have you? Do you really not know? Fine. I'll do you a favor and explain. You don't have to. The Officer's Academy is comprised of three houses of students, each of which is closely affiliated with its region of origin. The Black Eagle House is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Their house leader this year is Edelgard, the Imperial Princess, who is in line to be the next Emperor. The Blue Lion House is for students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. I've never noticed how, uh, like, how regal that lion looks. It is kind of epic. Their house leader this year is Prince Dimitri. He is to be the next King of Fargus. Lastly, there is the Golden Deer House, which is for students of the Leicester Alliance. Their house leader is Claude, grandson to Duke Regan, the leader of the Alliance. To think that the next Emperor, King, and Sovereign Duke are all here. It certainly is a promising year for the Academy. I'll say. I just hope none of those little treasures cause any trouble. Hmm, quite. For now, I suggest taking a stroll around the Academy to get your bearings. And when you've a moment, please stop by my research laboratory. The old man has a point. 
Oh, and keep in mind that I've only notified the house leaders that you're our new professor. It's more fun that way. I suggest you try spending time with the students. Some odd ducks in that bunch, but they're good kids. I'm sure Lady Rhea will have more information for you tomorrow, but that should get you going. Good luck. You'll need it. Have you no intention of changing your mind, Rhea? Appointing a stranger, a child no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy is... I have made my decision, Sedith. I know worrying comes naturally to you, but there is truly no need. That stranger is Geralt's flesh and blood, after all. I can't say that's all too comforting. How trustworthy is this Geralt character? Is he not the man who went missing after the Great Fire 21 years ago? I would remind you that Flane is now here with us as well. I beg of you, please consider whether this is an unnecessary risk. Sadith, they have my trust. Let that be enough for you as well. More importantly, I have received a report from Shamir. I am increasingly concerned about a matter regarding our suspicious individual. We cannot ignore those who harbor ill will toward the Church, especially if they are frequenting Garrick Mach. Yes, that matter is of great importance as well. I shall continue my investigation. Rhea, for now I will have faith that you are placing your trust with the utmost care. I pray that nothing occurs to shake that confidence. It's so interesting seeing all the characters who we had with us through all of the previous campaign are all uh, so young and fresh-faced again. Well, Hubert isn't, but we we didn't really have Hubert with us, so yeah. It's weird how used, like how used I got to their, uh, you know, their different faces they get halfway through, like after the time skip. Crazy. Well, at least Ray is pretty much the same. Hello, Rhea. I assume you are already aware that you will be teaching here at the Officers' Academy, correct? I like the way that she says, you will be teaching here. Have you- has anyone told you that you're going to be doing this? You don't get a choice in the matter. To start, please speak with the three house leaders. You should also take a look around the Academy and acquaint yourself with your new home. That is your first task here at the Monastery. Please let me know if you accept it. Once you have finished, come and speak with me. May I ask a favor of you? What was if you just say no? Alright then. May I ask a favor of you? You should speak with every student you can. This might be your only chance to see what it's really like before you become a professor. Speak to the three house leaders and gather information about the students in each house. The students can be found in the reception hall on the first floor and throughout the officer's academy. All right, I know what our quest is. Right, we are gonna speak to everyone right now. Let's see who we've got around here. Oh, there's nobody in here. Okay, this way. Hello, Seteth. Ha! I imagine you were a bit surprised that I recommended you as a professor here. By recommended, uh, you mean conscripted, right? Frankly, we had someone else in mind for the role, but they ran off during our dust-up with the bandits. 
can't entrust students to someone who's abandoned them once before, huh? You saved the lives of the students you came across. That, at least, was admirable. Now, you should make the rounds. Go around the monastery and see that you greet everyone. Okay. I can do that. He doesn't have anything else to say. That's fine. Let's so check. First floor. Yes. Th thank you. That's better. Oh. The reception hall. I didn't notice it had balconies on the upper floor there. Okay. Hey, Edelgard. So, you've accepted a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Hressbelk. I am the princess and heir apparent of the Adrestian Empire. I wonder if you'll be tasked with leading the Black Eagles. I hope you've had a chance to meet everyone. Would you like to know more about any of the Black Eagles? Well, yes I would! Okay, so this is a quick recap in case you, um, well... Me? Well, some think I'm a bit distant. Arrogant, even. But there's little to be done. One day, I must rise to become Adrestia's next emperor. I forgot they spoke. This is a quick recap in case you weren't here for the last run through. This is... What else? Oh. Well, it seems to me that we may have similar personalities. She keeps going. But yes, uh, in case you weren't here for the last playthrough, we're just going to go through each person and see what's going on. Also, it helps me remind what exactly the characters are, as in what their special abilities do for this new group that we're with. What's swap display do? Oh, we want to zoom in. Okay. So she gets the Multiplies Experience one. I believe all the house leaders have the exact same ability just to get them more experience. And I believe they may have that because they're taken out of uh, certain fights. So it just evens experience across the board, basically. So she is not a magic user. She is very much a axe sword user. She's probably, if you're going to go for one of the classes, she probably fits quite nicely into that... Um, What's it? I think it's the War Master class later on, although uh, maybe a Warrior class or something she would fit nicely into. Uh, I think the House Leaders get their own special class, so we don't we don't necessarily need to uh, pigeonhole her quite as much. Hubert, we do, I don't know anything about Hubert because he literally well he like spoke single sentences to us for most of the game. Hubert is the heir of Marquis Vestra. He has served me since I was a child. You may think his blood runs a bit cold, but <laughs> actually that's rather accurate. Still, if you can get past that, you'll see he's quite astute and reasonable. So Huber is into bow, reason, and authority, and gets extra might with gambits. Interesting. So he actively wants more authority so he can have better gambits. Huh. Okay then. Well, we might have to keep keep an eye out for um, what exactly we want to do with this battalion then. Okay, so he kind of sits at the back, chucks gambits at people. Okay. That's interesting. Ferdinand. For some reason, he thinks of me as a bitter rival and is always trying to challenge me. It's terribly irritating. His house is that of Duke Iyer, which produces Adrestia's prime ministers. That family is... Perhaps too pleased with its own status. Okay, so he has no weaknesses. He's good at swords, lances, axes, and horses. So probably what he would end up being is he would end up being some kind of cavalry class. Um, which there are a lot of. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at those and see which one fits him best once we get into it. And his ability is confidence. Grants hit slash avo plus 15 when the unit is at full HP. So ideally what you want to do is you want to pair him with a healer and basically just walk around and go, he hits somebody, he gets healed to fool. Okay, that's actually really good for hit an avo. Yeah, especially the avo, so most of the time we might actually dodge. Hmm, wonder if it's worth leaning into that with his character. 
Um, I think one of those stats gives you increased dodge. I don't know which one it is. Might be, might just be luck, but I think maybe speed. Anyway, we could, we could have a look. Uh, Lintart. He's remarkably intelligent, but he only wishes to apply himself to tasks that particularly interest him, and nothing else. He's also fond of, well, napping. If he had any work ethic or sense of duty to speak of, I suppose he would be destined to become an official of the Empire. Okay, so if the unit takes no action except wait, recovers up to 10% of max HP. His strengths are healing, uh, or faith and uh, reason, and his weaknesses are axe and fist, so, or brawling. So really what he would do most of the time is you just sit him at the back of a fight and you just heal when it's off cooldown, and if nobody needs healed, he just heals up himself. Okay, interesting. Not sure how that works in practice, but... There you go. He's the second son of Count Burglies. He has no inheritance in his future, which is perhaps why he's always so eager to prove himself. He's overly energetic and rushes headfirst into any battle. If he ends up in your care, be sure to keep a close eye on him. Okay, so Caspar is a born fighter. Adjacent foes suffer minus 10 avo during combat. So ideally what you want him to do is you want to charge him right into the center of enemies and basically like into a group of them first and then everyone else can have an easier time attacking. So his strengths are um, axe and brawling. So he's going to be very similar to Raphael in our previous um, run. So he's going to be very much about the uh, like the punching people. And the weaknesses are bow. Um, so that's reason and authority. So it's not very good with battalions. He's not very good with magics or bow, or bow. So basically, you just want to chuck him in the middle of something. If we get him a horse as well with that ability, you, well, you can just stick him in the middle pretty much from anywhere and it would work out. Okay. Bernadetta? She's Count Varley's only daughter. I suppose you could say she's a bit eccentric, but she seems like a gentle soul. I believe she shut herself away in her quarters and doesn't care to leave, but... Don't worry, I'll make sure she finds her way to class. Persecution Complex grants attack plus 5 when the unit is not at full HP. Okay, so she's good at lance and bow, which pretty much means that she's going to be a bow knight. Because those are the main two things that go into bow knight. What's interesting as a bow user is that you often wouldn't want to ever be in a position of being hit, so that your ability would never activate. Hmm. It would make a lot of sense if she was using a sword, because there are a lot of swords that harm you when you use them. So maybe that would be like that would be a way to activate it, but hmm. Yeah, I don't know how you would do that. One thing that is you could do is if you level in combat and your HP goes up, then you're not at full HP. And then you could somehow use that maybe, but Yeah. It's an odd one. We'll see how to do use that. Dorothea? Few commoners have joined the Black Eagle House, but Dorothea is an exception. She's a songstress from a famous opera company in the Empire. I'm not entirely sure what brought her to the Officers' Academy. So songstress, adjacent allies recover up to 10% of max HP at the start of each turn. Which seems like you would want her basically to just sit next to a bunch of people and heal them up. So like, they run in, they get hit, and you just move her in behind and then they just naturally get healed. But with Sword and um, Reason as her main two, she's looking very much like she would be some sort of um, mortal savant. However, there is a class in the game, which I suspect she is, meant, she is made for, which um, uses magic and swords quite well. So that would probably be what we aim for. And it also buffs allies. So I think that would fit quite well with the adjacent allies recovering HP, but we'll see. And the final one is Petra. To the west of Foblin is an archipelago called Bridget. Petra is the granddaughter of their king. Bridget is a vassal state of the Empire, which is how she came to be enrolled here. She's incredibly smart and studious. So she, her abilities are sword, axe, bow, flying. She can't do magic. And 
her defining ability is grant crit plus 20 when foe's HP is less than 50% HP. That pretty much means other people weaken things and then she flies in and just hits them right down. Just goes right in there, lowers their HP to zero. What is interesting is there's no natural person, or I mean, apart from Petra, to be a flyer in this group. Like, there's there's nobody that you'd say, ah, that's our, that's our Wyvern Rider, that's our Pegasus Rider. Like, even with Petra, she's not, she doesn't naturally fit into that because their only class which really fits in there is the Axe for Wyvern Rider. I don't believe any of the others really fit in quite as well. But, because I think that uh, the Pegasus Rider class needs you to have Lance, so... Yeah, we'll see where we go with that. And that is the Black Eagles. Um, one thing I did want to check very quickly here if I head into this one. Um, one, do we have the same crest? Oh yeah, we have the mystery crest. But two, which one of these lowers, uh, well, increases dodge? Ah, speed. So what you would do uh, if we wanted that one's... Yeah, if we wanted to min-max the avoidance rate thing, we'd put it into speed. Okay. Oh, right. You can see absolutely everybody here. Huh. Okay, cool. Well, we'll look at that later. Pardon me. Hello there. Greetings. You must be the new professor. What a pleasure. As for me, my job is to stand here at this glorious entrance and leisurely watch over the comings and goings of everyone. Make folks smile, you know? I know. Yeah, and by that, I mean to vigilantly guard this entrance with my very life. No levity whatsoever. As of now, nothing to report. Yeah, speak to you later. Wait, we can speak to Edelgard again? I think it's just saying that we could do that same thing again with her. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to go and chat with everybody. This is the Officer's Academy. There is a room in the Officer's Academy. Nice. Oh, hello, cat. Yeah. Oh, it's sleeping. Hey, Lord. Well, well, scored a teaching gig here, did you? Talk about a great first impression. I guess that means I'd better introduce myself properly. I'm Claude Von Regan. I'm from the ruling house of the Leicester Alliance, but don't worry too much about all that madness. I'm guessing you don't know which class you'll be teaching yet, do you? I bet you'd like ours. We're not as difficult as the other two. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more about anyone? No. Right. Um, for speaking to people, I'm going to skip the people from the Golden Deer and the Blue Lion's house for just now. Uh, and we're just going to speak to people in our house. But when we do the future ones, when we go around and talk to everybody about what's happening, we will include everybody. Right, right. It's just at the start here. Um, we've already spoken to all of them at the start of the previous run. So don't need to do it again. They pretty much give you a quick rundown of who they are. Hello. This is the classroom of the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Our house leader is Princess Edelgard. There are many other nobles among our ranks as well. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, what? I don't talk to strangers. Bernadetta, this is no stranger. Our house leader owes this person a great debt. Is that not right? I am Ferdinand von Eyer, legitimate son of the Eyer family, the Empire's foremost house. Are you going to join our class? I look forward to getting better acquainted with you. Hello, Dorothea. Well now, you don't have a familiar face. What brings you here? Oh, my name is Dorothea. Before I joined the Academy, I was a member of an opera company in the Empire. You should hear me sing sometime. I'd love to. Hello. Is it true that you saved Edelgard? That's incredible. The name's Caspar, by the way. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Caspar. Linhard. Goodbye. Oh, Sheesh, goodbye. Linhard. How'd you get into the academy with those manners? So, are you a student here too? Maybe we'll be in the same class. Well, I have a feeling we'll be in the same class. I'm not a student. Thank you. Hello. 
I am Hubert, a humble servant of Lady Edelgard. I heard you came to the aid of Her Highness. You have my most sincere thanks. This is Petra. She has come all the way from Brigid to study in the Empire. Back on her archipelago, she is actually a princess. In Fodlin terms, she would be called heir to the throne. Hello. I am called Petra. I am pleased to be meeting with... Uh, no, uh, I am pleased to have met you. Uh, is that everyone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think that is everyone, actually. Ah, huh, okay. Um, right. Who's all the way over here? Oh, hello. What? What do you want? I am Yuritsa. I teach here. Weapon instruction. These are the training grounds. Goodbye. Goodbye. You don't have business here yet. No, I don't want to walk over there. Oh, it's awful over there. Can I go this way? I can if I want to. Okay. Uh, right. Hello, Dimitri. Hello. Please accept my apologies for the other day. You came to our aid, yet I hadn't even the courtesy to properly introduce myself. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed. Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Of course, at the Academy, I am simply a student. And I've heard word that you are to become a professor here. You're better informed than some. Delightful news. I still have much to learn, but I'm confident I could benefit greatly from your guidance. In any case, welcome to the monastery. I hear you're investigating the different houses here. Did any of the Blue Lions catch your attention? Nope. I appreciate your effort. I suppose I should return to Rhea. Return me. How are you enjoying your time at the Academy thus far? I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. But it is as the Archbishop desires. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. All so different. I hope you've made it a point to get to know each of them. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of the remaining two houses. Which house will I choose? I would like the Adrestian Empire. A house for students from the Adrestian Empire. Many are nobility, and most of them use magic. Huh. I didn't notice, but actually, yeah. I, well, this is most of them use magic. Four out of the eight can use ma- well, use magic primarily. I'm just checking, what does it say about the others? This is these ones tend to be uh, chivalry and excel at, mar at military arts. Okay. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I'm trying to see how many of them use magic. See, there you got- yeah, you got two out of eight. Okay, and then this one, skilled archers. Yeah, I suppose, actually, comparably, this one, you if you look at just people who should be using magic, you're at 2 out of 8 as well. So yeah, it's a much higher... It's a higher ratio here, I guess. So you have chosen the Black Eagles led by Edelgard, correct? Yeah. Your heart has made its choice, then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. I just noticed that the bits at the top and bottom of the screen have turned red. Oh, that's a neat touch. It's going to be very odd after having them been yellow for so, so long. I hadn't even clicked that that was because we were at the Golden Deer House. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh! I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. Hello, Flane. I am in the middle of something, Flane. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, 
who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officer's Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. Well, I'll try not to, I guess. Wait, so our new professor is you? I didn't see that one coming. Don't sound so shocked. Easy, Caspar. <laughs> Aren't you being a bit rude? And where can I get a hat like that? You know it's a waste of time to expect politeness from him. It will be a pleasure learning from you, Professor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to take a nap. <laughs> don't look at me like that! Oh, and please don't talk to me too much either. I just want to say, I want absolutely every conversation with a group in this in this house to just start with Lindhart saying one line and just saying, then I'm off to go and have a nap. And then he's just gone. For the rest of the game, Lindhart just, he just pieces out. It'd be interesting actually with Bernadetta as well wanting to hide away. It'd be like, Lindhart leaves, Bernadetta's like, nope, can't handle this, I'm out. And it's just slowly left until there's only just me and Edelgard standing here going, what is, what's happened to this house? I'm sorry for the chaos you've walked into. That is brilliant. I hear we are rather close in age, Professor. I hope you do not mind if we treat you like one of us. In our class, we try to treat each other as equals, despite any differences in age or status. Personally, I would love to include you in that inner circle. I don't mind at all. You have a gut, Professor. I will take great joy from your teachings. I'm trying to figure out what she meant to say. You have guts, I think is what she meant to say. Petra, I believe you mean to say that our professor has guts. That's a bit different from having a gut. Thank you, Dorothea. You can't go around saying someone so slim and attractive has a gut. Well, thank you for the compliment. Uh, please take my apologies. I have not yet mastered this language. Professor, I want you to know that it's perfectly acceptable for you to treat me as you do the others. I may be the Imperial Princess, but here at the Academy, I'm just another student. You're the Imperial Princess? You, you haven't mentioned it at all before. That said, know that I have high expectations of you, and high hopes. But I'm certain you can lead the Black Eagle House to greatness. Sure, sure. Now let's break the ice with a training session. I want to see our new teacher in action. Why will the ice be broken? Is this a custom I have missed in my studies? Not real ice, just the ice of... Um, well, it just means let's get to know each other. I don't want to train. Let's stay in the classroom and learn from a book. Let's all calm down and have a nice cup of tea, how about? Doesn't that sound lovely, Professor? This is absolute chaos, and I love it. Perfection. I know we all agreed to treat each other as equals, but there is a limit to what I can tolerate. The esteemed Black Eagle House requires order. Looks like your first job will be to quiet down this racket. I don't envy you. Uh, they're not normally this... rowdy. I do hope you can manage, Professor. There are new places to explore in the monastery. Receive 1,000 gold from the Church of Seros as funding for this month's activities. Roughly equivalent to, hmm, a couple of fish, as we found out. You know, that's fine. The 26th. Say, while you're here, 
I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything, about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. Crests are a fascinating topic. But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. And you believe I have a crest? I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. As I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest and you just happened to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Hmm. Well, last time I got him to do all this investigation, I'm just going to say, no, there's no need to look into it. I most strongly disagree. There absolutely is a need. My crest research is of critical importance to the church, I'll have you know. Since you are now a professor here, I must insist that you aid in my research. Of course, there are those who lack the foresight to aid in my endeavors, such as that stubborn Seteth, but such individuals are the rare exception. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. Oh, you don't get a choice. I see. That's fine. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrilling! <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm. What could this line here be indicating? Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps... Perhaps. What in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then, it was the 27th. An academy uniform for the protagonist is now available in your journal. DLC supplies have arrived. Head to your personal quarters and check and check by the bed to pick them up. Special auxiliary battles are now available. Select battle during chapter 3 or later to engage in these new battles. House loungewear is now available from your journal as a look for selected units. In addition, glasses are now available as an accessory for the protagonist. It is now possible to recruit Anna from chapter 3 onwards. Additional crests will be available from chapter 2 onwards. You can check them out at the book from the bulletin board. You can now change select units into servants attire, summer wear or even evening wear from your journal. With each moon, professors of the officers it thank, notes thank you, that they carefully... Thank you, I know how the calendar works. Well, I can't not. So this is my room. I thought I heard a girl's voice, but I must have been imagining things. Okay, well, I want to just check the DLC stuff before we end the episode. DLC supplies are now available. These supplies will be taken 
all at once as a set. You must have space available in your convoy or storehouse to do so. So you get these things that per you get these ones that permanently increase your movement, HP, strength, and speed. Sure. I may not use them, but I'll take them. And journal? Unit appearance. Uh, so... Oh my god, we've got so many different appearances. So we can switch to... Academy, we can go with cloak. Okay. Or... Alternatively... We can go without cloak. Interesting. We can also go into house loungewear. What? <laughs> looks so bad. That's just atrocious. Okay, servant's attire. Classic. That's so bad. What's custom? Wait, is custom it just has a line on it? Yeah, okay. Summer wear. I mean, that's slightly better. I mean... By slightly, I really mean slightly. And then evening wear? Oh, that is actually more like it. That's much better. What was the war? So there's, there's default. Academy's fairly good, actually. I quite like Academy. Evening wear is also acceptable. House lounge wear is maybe the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Comparatively. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, this is obviously... Th this is slightly worse. But, you know. <laughs> Summer wear, I think, is fine. Let's go Academy of Cloak. I think that is a kind of stylish look for us. Oh, that, and you see, we could also have with glasses, though. I mean, that's fine. What happens if we go? Does that look better? Does the summer wear look better with the glasses? Yeah, maybe. Evening wear? Possibly. House lounge wear? No, not really. Let's go for this without the glasses. Right? Then in battle, we can choose to be what we are in the monastery. You know, I think we will. That's fine. So we could do this for everyone. We can get right into it. So I could go, what? Well, <laughs> the house lounge for it just doesn't look good. And you can have absolutely everyone dressed up in just the mage uniform. Okay, so it's the same for everyone. That's fine. Good to know. So what does it look like for, say, Hubert? What's his house lounge wear? Like, what is this for? <laughs> I don't understand this one. What's his servant's attire? That is almost good for Hubert. Like, I, I almost like that. See, that's, that's kind of still got something stylish going on for him. I don't know what's up with his cuff, but that is still stylish. Summer wear? Yeah, that's acceptable. Evening wear? Also acceptable. His evening wear is his normal wear. Pretty much. Is there anyone else I want to have a look at here? I, I gotta see it. Yep. Okay, you know what? Look pretty much as I thought it would. Actually, you know who else I want to have a look at? I want to have a look at Petra. Is her house lounge wear identical? It is. What is... I'm, I am... A new level of what is going on. So is it the exact same? If I go to Dorothea... Is hers the... Yeah, it's just going to be the exact same. She loses her fancy hat. What's even the point at that point? Yeah. Well. It's an experience. 
At least we get, you know, we can wear ours. That's okay. I mean, some of ours were alright. You know what I might do? Is I'm, the only one that I might put on is if it gets to summer, I may just put, make everyone wear the, uh, summer wear. But, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. As it is the first episode of a new series, I would just like to remind you that liking, subscribing, commenting really helps uh, with the YouTube algorithm in terms of making the channel grow, making the series grow, and increasing the views on the initial view series, uh, the initial video in the series and the series as a whole. Anyway, I only mentioned this at the start of the first episode of a series, and I won't mention it again. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.